Hello Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life, and I've got Mark Toronto with me. Hey. Now Mark is the, is a design, design director, director right. for Hidden Path Entertainment, working on the game Defense Grid 2. Right. Yes. We're really, really excited. Yeah, yeah. I, I have just, okay, so I have to admit, I didn't play the game before until recently. Because I saw you guys on Kickstarter, and I said, oh, this looks interesting. And, and plus, I happen to know somebody who's on the development team, and that's how I was introduced to it. Right. And so uh, I, I got a surprise, actually, because I became, uh, what, what, do they, what do they call that? A pl I gave a pledge. And when I did that, not only am I pledging that I'm going to get a copy of the game, you know, the, the content and everything whenever it releases, but you guys sent me a code, yeah. like, before my credit card's even been charged. We, we actually, when we started, we didn't know if Kickstarter would allow that. We had to check to make sure it wasn't against some kind of rules, but I said, a lot of people, like you, haven't mm -hmm. really experienced the game, and I think once people try it out, they'll say, I want more Defense Grid, like our, our other friends did. It's, Absolutely. Uh, we think it's a game that really has staying power. People are still playing it years after we've released it. We're really excited about what we want to do with the franchise. But I think part of that was getting more people um, in that have played it and become fans. I, I think that what you've done for me by doing this is you totally cemented the value. And I did the $30 level so mm -hmm. I could get the downloadable yeah. content as well. And um, it just totally so worth it because I'm already playing. Right. And I don't have to wait. What, what is the projected release date? December? Uh, so for the um, expansion content, uh, yeah. it would be December this year. Yeah. And yeah. and so I don't have to wait. I'm right. already I'm playing right now. Yep. And, and you'll be able and to, then play I get to play the again. expansion content. And then hopefully we'll be able to make DG2 on as quick as we can get funding mm -hmm. to make it. I mean, mm -hmm. we're all committed here at Hidden Path to making Defense Grid 2. So we just wanted to make it happen. So now, how involved were you with the first one? Are you there for the whole thing? Right for the whole thing, yeah. Okay. Michael Austin is uh, the primary lead, so he really did the, the tower, uh, the, the fine balance and things like that. Um, I was involved at the very beginning with, we say, what you know what things are exciting. Michael and I were both really excited by tower defense as a genre. Mm -hmm. uh, we played a lot of different tower defense, and you know, I said, this is really lacking a few things. I mean, one thing... When I played tower defense, uh, there was a disappointment every time. Which you would, once the waves got so far through the level, you kind of knew how it was going to turn out, and then it's just, oh, I'm just waiting for it to be over. Mm -hmm. um, or you made a mistake, you know, level 79 of of 100, and it's like, oh, I got to start over again. So there was this really disappointing um, curve to the game that I wanted to fix. That was a primary focus of. Uh, we introduced a feature that lets you rewind, so you just back up. Um, yeah, I've used that once game. already. Yeah, you'll use, yeah. It, you'll mm -hmm. use it more. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, for me as a designer, I think um, you know if you can pick out exactly what you did wrong and go back and fix that, and then play more after that, I think that's the most satisfying um, mm -hmm. thing. So keeping the player in that cycle of engagement of oh, I know what I did, and now you reach the next problem, which is okay. There's two ways to fix that. I'm going to try this one, but it's really easy to go back and try a different way. Oh, I'm going to use all, all fire towers now. I'm going to Tesla Towers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that leads a, with a lot of different ways to win, and everybody, uh, even around the office when we do a new level, it's like, oh, did you try that with all cannon towers? And it's like, what, you can do that with cannon towers? So, uh, you know, we enjoy discovering new strategies, and the players have found amazing things that we... And there's uh, so many different combinations. Tried. Right. And everything. And so, so there's a lot of right ways to do it. Several wrong ways to do it, too. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing with... Um, I, I was a designer on Age of Empires, uh, mm. uh, Age of Empires 2. And one of the things that we had as a tenant was multiple paths to victory. And I've always tried right. to repli replicate that in other game designs, which is if there are multiple ways to win, then you can discover those for yourself. You can discover them by talking to friends, which is, oh, did you try it you know, this other way? So we really liked uh, having that in the game and, and building in features that, that let you, you try different uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. So what, what, is the, what, what is one of the things that uh, you really enjoyed about Defense Grid that you, that you want to really embellish on and see more of in the future? Well, I think... Um, you know, the solid um, replayability, the really, really fine level balance, I think is, is core to our product. Was that I a think, mistake, the level balance, or how did that happen? No, um, it takes, there's a there's a process, and oh, okay. um, it's a little bit science and a little bit art. Um, 
uh, Michael Austin's just a total math whiz, um, so you know he could see uh, what are the, uh, the you know the balance between the different um, the payouts for the different monsters that come through um, and using the different towers. So uh, you know making each tower have a distinctive use and um, interesting uses in combination was part of um, the player's learning and strategy. Um, having the the waves balance out so pretty much with a couple of tries anybody of any skill level can get through the content uh, so we have that uh, you know the sort of star system mm -hmm. uh, bronze silver gold um, uh, but really having having it just keep you on the edge of your capability uh, for whatever your goals are I mean some people went beyond what we thought for you know for gold um, we want a particular number of resources and survive uh, survive the level some people said I want the aliens never to touch my cores so they set an above gold level mm -hmm. uh, for themselves <laughs> yeah it's their own their own internal goals so I think you know core to the to this game is um, you know really keeping that balance and replayability that's the kind of polish that that players recognize as a quality product Mm -hmm. um, I think the where we want to really expand the franchise is by adding multiplayer. Lots of people love playing this game, and they just go, "If I could just play this with my kid, or I could play this with my brother, mm -hmm. um, that you know, that my life would be over. You know, I could die happy." <laughs> um, you know, but I think giving that experience that okay, now adding co-op modes, adding competitive modes that people can enjoy Defense Grid and and enjoy the social aspect of it as well. Mm -hmm. So multiplayer is one area. Um, user created content is another. People say, oh, if I could just, I really have an idea for a level that I'd really like to try. Uh, so we want to make tools in Defense Grid too that uh, and in the Kickstarter. Have you seen? Have you seen in that in that vein of of making player content? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the game Happy Wheels? I haven't seen Happy Wheels. Happy Wheels is, is it's an independent game, mm -hmm. and he allows a whole bunch of people. It's a death game. Basically, you got to get your character through the maze without him getting hit by spikes or mangled by some machinery or something like that. And it's very gory, but it's a lot of fun. Right. Especially when you're irresponsible dad with your kid on the back of your bicycle, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get through there. Okay. Um, but but what I've seen there is that all these people are playing levels. And then, they ha then at a certain point, they become popular. Mm -hmm. And when they become popular, they tend to be really good levels to play right. and everything. And, and I would so love to see you know, all of the people making all of their own defense grid stuff. And you know, there could be 10,000, 100,000 different levels out there, but some way for the cream of the crop to come to the top. Right. And, um, and, and there's, there are Steam features that we'd like to take advantage of, and really we have such a great community. Everybody's really, really friendly in the Defense Grid community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're really looking forward to what the fans can do to leverage our engine and tools uh, mm -hmm. with their own content and really make things that everybody can enjoy. I'm a big fan of sort of democratizing the game development process and letting people um, add their creativity and build on you know, what we've given as a tool set. So uh, that goes back to my whole career in game design is enabling players to make uh, great games with us. Do you think that uh, if you enable players to make great game design, that they're going to do things that you never expected? That's the most fun. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, going mm -hmm. back to my experience with Age of Kings, um, people were making a role-playing game inside the... It was never intended for a that. A game within oh, the game? A game within the game. If I had just known, we would have given you some extra variables so you didn't have to overload wood to be experience <laughs> points. <laughs> um, but, you know, this going in, we know how popular creative content will be, so um, letting people make things, letting people rate uh, their maps and each other's maps, you know, to see mm -hmm. which ones will float to the top. Mm -hmm. Because the imagination of all of us is so much greater than the imagination of just the people here in the studio. Right. I look forward to you know seeing what people will come up with, um, uh, partnering with people to make new crazy stuff. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, you find new hidden talent designers, and wow, that was really innovative. I didn't even think you could do that. Mm -hmm. um, then you go, hey. Do you, guys, do you guys hire about, uh, people, people like that? Um, I haven't here at the studio, but yeah, people that uh, that we hired. We did a contest back at Ensemble Studios for people that did did uh, uh, Age of Empire scenarios. Was how we helped select designers and people from outside the industry came in uh, that could do that. That'd be so cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. So that accidentally end up you in know, the when you industry. Enable, when you enable people to to apply their creativity and artistic uh, mm -hmm. uh, spirit. To making games, you know, never know what'll happen. Yeah, yeah. So now I kind of interrupted you with what you can take from the game and, and totally embellish on. 
because I got all excited about whatever it was <laughs> you were saying, you know. Um, and so, and so, so what do you want to 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 really make sure is brought forth and and you know really increase the quality of it uh, for the future versions? I, I think. You know, for a lot of people, it's uh, more of what I loved, but more ways to play the game, right? So, um, you know, opening up new kinds of modes, new kinds of, uh, it, one of the themes might be uh, moving pieces. So mm. in, uh, in Defense Grid 1, uh, all the levels are static. Well, mm -hmm. in Defense Grid 2, uh, imagine big platforms that could move. So there might be a whole bunch of enemies mm -hmm. just You could use resources to, to, to try move to get something across, across right? and move it back. Something yeah, like even that. if it's diverting cores to, to a special housing uh, that is going to activate a platform or, or things that are happening at a certain time, you know, the bases are moving, and so it's changing the tactical uh, decision space. Mm -hmm. So now you have a threat that's coming really slowly that you can see and you're making trade-offs of, okay, do I have to deal with the immediate incoming wave um, or even is it worth uh, uh, some sacrifice of not having a, you know, my perfect strategy here to have a bigger play down the road, mm -hmm. you know, it's where I really, if I'm going to protect all the cores um, throughout, you know, just changing that tactical landscape on players will be an interesting challenge for them to overcome. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of different uh, areas that we want to explore, but definitely multiplayer user-created content, um, continuing the great uh, tradition of the story. We're the first uh, tower defense game to have a story, um, and we think we did a pretty compelling uh, mm -hmm. storytelling. I was certainly interested in what was happening with Fletcher. Um, we would love to continue in that vein with uh, expansion content and, of course, Defense Grid 2, having a great story that really keeps you interested in what's happening uh, in the storyline. Mm -hmm. Will we see any new things like civilians getting in the way? <laughs> you know, anything's on the table. Um, we've really tried to keep the game uh, you defending, you know, you and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's kind of you against the aliens. Um, I can't say that that's, that's not something that will happen, but it hasn't been anything we've talked about strongly, uh, there's mm -hmm. a strong advocacy for that. Uh, but we would like to see this franchise go in, in lots of different directions, mm -hmm. and if that is the thing that makes the most sense, we'll do that. Right. Uh, we do a lot of experiments. We, we treat game design as this evolving process. We start out with, with a roadmap, we start out with some uh, big features, but then as input of everybody on the team, it's um, everybody's engagement with the product, what, uh, you know, what they imagine, um, and what they're having fun with. And somebody will say, well, here's the thing where there's vehicles and you don't have any control over these, you know, there's shipping containers coming in, but wouldn't it be cool if aliens were trying to, you know, take those as well as your cores or something mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. we're open to the, the, the creativity of the entire company um, and the fan base. People go, oh, if I could just, you know, see this. And we'd read all the fan mail. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah I can't so, say, it, like, anything is, is open. Uh, you know, we'll set the, the, a big roadmap, but the little diversions along the way sometimes make for a much better game. Mm -hmm. Games within games right. and stuff like that, yeah. Do, um, oh, let's see here. Do you, um, do you take any, when you're designing a game like this, do you take any elements that you see in other games that are successful and kind of blend them in? Uh, to your own, or do you, or do you believe that it has to be one hundred percent original thought, no, no. original content? No, I think um, it, it's always a blend of, of all your experiences. I take things from uh, all through my game design career. I take things from from theater, from garden design, from uh, street performance, anywhere. Um, you know, it's a it's a communication medium. It's establishing an emotional connection with an audience. So mm -hmm. when I look at um, what I want the player to experience, uh, so what feelings uh, do we want to conjure up, um, and then what systems go into um, those feelings, what systems go into keeping the emotion level high uh, or releasing that tension. Mm -hmm. um, and, and each feature and each uh, element of the game design, whether it's music or the graphics or the audio, um, can enhance or dampen uh, different emotions. So we look at what things will add to that. If we want to increase tension, do we increase time? Do we increase um, uh, surprise? Uh, so there's all kinds of ways we go, okay, what needs to happen at this level? I think Michael did a great job with establishing themes uh, with each of the level, uh, you know, a particular kind of defense or introducing a new tower or introducing a new mob um, that really made you think about how you wanted to play each level out. So. Uh, I'm <laughs> losing the thread of the initial question. <laughs> so I think that, uh, yes, take in everything. Um, uh, really incorporate the best ideas. Um, 
and that's just part of how we evolve the medium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you something on a more personal level. Sure. The um, and this is this is a question that I see from a lot of our viewers that um, that talk about video game design and everything. Mm -hmm. Do you have an educational background in video game design? I don't. Um, do you have any? Do you have there? Any? There wasn't a design education out there. There are all kinds of great institutions now. I'm on the advisory board for several uh, mm -hmm. for the curriculum advisories. Uh, I know people that are running. I mean, my peers are now running those programs that people are getting. There's master's degree in mm -hmm. game design or bachelor's do, degree. In game do you design. have a, a degree? Um, so my degree is in computer science. Okay. Um, I came from the technical, from the programming side, mm -hmm. um, and moved over into design with Age of Empires too. So how how does that? computer science degree, how does that, even though it's not what you're necessarily doing, but how does that impact what you do and how you make the game? As a professional designer, it's about being able to communicate to the team. So with engineers, I can speak the engineering language. I understand mm -hmm. the problems mm -hmm. that they face. Um, I understand ways to get around problems from an engineering perspective. Um, I also do fine art in my spare time. I do uh, charcoal, life drawing, and, and mm -hmm. things like that. So. I can communicate to artists in a visual way, right? Mm -hmm. I can sketch an idea. Um, we can talk about things, what the color space uh, does emotionally, right? So being versatile in both engineering and in arts kind of lets me be a middle person that can help the two teams talk to each other, uh, that we can all work together. Here at Hidden Path, we collaboratively solve problems. So some problems are extremely difficult to solve with engineering, but sometimes there's a design, you know, we go, oh, we don't have to do it that way. You know, let's take a completely different approach mm -hmm. that doesn't involve, you know, writing an extremely complex AI system. Um, sometimes some problems you'll solve artistically, they'll go, well, um, you know, we can outline the character um, so you can see them in a difficult visibility situation. So we don't have to change the whole smoke model of the game, or you know, the whole we, lighting we'll of the you, room. The whole know. lighting of the room, right? We'll yeah. give you a, a automatic night vision system mm -hmm. that we write into mm -hmm. the fiction of the game. So mm -hmm. we solve problems in the most efficient way possible, collaborating uh, with mm -hmm. all the disciplines in game design. That's good. That's good. A lot. A lot of times I see. I, in fact, I got this one from uh, a guy who's just about to graduate as a med student who says. I think I want to give this up and I want to be a video game designer. And I'm like, dude, you're a med student, almost done, and everything. But then the whole discussion became how can he use his knowledge in the medical field to video games? And it kind of opened up a whole new world of a way of thinking, kind of like the creative thing of, you know, we don't have to change the lighting in the room, we don't have to change the smoke, right. just make your character more visible. I, I think in the, in the future, um, you know, a knowledge of game design skills and, and design systems is will be useful for every career, just like now a, a computer knowledge is useful everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that's happening in medical education, um, you know, medical programs where people can uh, visualize what's happening internally. I mean, someone that has a medical background um, and a game design background can go, okay, what's a system for um, me having better health? Right there, are, mm -hmm. I have a I have a, a body bug, mm -hmm. right, which is a gamification of eating healthy and exercising. Mm -hmm. Right, it gives me regular updates on my iPhone that says, "Oh, you've walked this many steps. You know, can you kick it up a notch mm -hmm. uh, to hit five thousand steps a day?" So, you know, uh, game design knowledge plus any other knowledge means I have domain expertise um, plus a way to motivate and communicate with people, which is what game design is about. Mm -hmm. Um, really, uh, you know, finding fun and motivation to do things uh, inside the game. Yeah. So, okay. Well, uh, now it's just a matter of how fast the game's going to be made. Right. And so the, there's several tiers on the Kickstarter site, and, and basically hit the first tier and it guarantees this much and, right. and, and so forth. Uh, and so what... Um, you know, I, I guess, what if you were going to tell people why they should uh, go ahead and you know pledge on this? What is it you're going to say to them? Get in, get like we're making a party, right? Get in and play with us now. Play, the, play the game now. Um, we really want to make this game. I think if you play Defense Grid One, you'll go. 
I think Defense Grid 2 would be a worthy project. I'm already uh, thinking that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody who experiences it, if you like um, you know, games a little puzzle element, a little strategy element, we're not uh, you know, super fast reactions. You have to get in there. It's not mm -hmm. a high tension game, right? So think about game. And if you mess up, you hit a button and you go back a minute before. You're not wasting whole evenings. Um, you're enjoying yourself, right? It isn't a, a tedious grind of replay. It's I'm having fun every moment, and I have new ideas about how I want to play things differently. Um, we we've, we've made a game that just you know is fun to play, and we mm -hmm. want to really continue that tradition with Defense Grid too. We love this franchise. I mean, we're a little indie developer. This is kind of our, you know, this is our uh, our one hope for a big success. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do other great projects, and we love the other work we do. But of the stuff that we make and publish ourselves, this is kind of our, mm -hmm. uh, this is our one ticket. So, right. uh, we hope this works out well. We love to put a lot of content in the box. We love to put a lot of joy and fun. Um, people are still playing the game, you know, years later. That's really unusual right. for uh, for a smaller downloadable game. Um, but we like giving good value. We think you'll see that in Defense Grid 1, and we would love to make a Defense Grid 2 for our fans. Yeah, well, excellent. So I'm a supporter. So click the link below, and I think the, the minimum is 15 bucks, yeah. and you're in? Yeah. And then uh, I did the $30 level so that I could get the downloadable content with it, too. And you can look, there's some, so. uh, we've, we're really lucky. Uh, uh, CEO Jeff Pops talked to, uh, we have some friends at AMD and Razer, and they said, oh, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we said, hey, we're going to do this Kickstarter. We really love to see Defense Grid 2 made. You know, do you guys want to participate in that? I said, yeah, we'll, we'll give some cool mice, new cutting edge stuff, um, yeah. and new video cards. Uh, so we have some really good uh, things. They said, well, you know, make some, make some pledged tiers, uh, and you can offer video cards, and we'll contribute that to the project. So we were lucky that they, they kicked mm -hmm. in a bunch of money for mm -hmm. hardware. There's we reason to spend more than 30 Yeah, bucks. we hope people will take advantage of that. Yeah. I mean, the, the real reason for, I'm, I back 20-something Kickstarter projects because mm -hmm. I believe in people's vision. I hope people will play the game, believe in our vision, and back the project for that. I mean, that you get, you know, an awesome USB key or... To, did you see the Fletcher uh, Magic 8-Ball thing? Oh, yeah. Well, I heard about it. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't say Magic 8-Ball, but it's a <laughs> ask, let Fletcher decide uh, yeah, device. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I uh, appreciate your time uh, for the interview today, and I wish you guys much success. Thanks. Thanks for coming so, out. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, to all of you who are watching, do click the link below. At least take a look at it. And um, it's really cheap to get in. So jump um, on in with us. Yeah, there's if you're already played Defense Grid, um, there are new games inside the existing Defense Grid game. So if you haven't, if you played Defense Grid and then you finished it, go back and check out what's new and uh, it's a surprise for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and if you already have just the the vanilla, then you can get the the downloadable content version, which right. is like thirty dollar one. And um, so and check out on this channel here. I'm going to actually. Uh, discuss some of my gameplay, show you some of my gameplay, and um, then you can show me how it's really done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Marky Dragon. Take care. Mark Toronto. Thanks.